Hey, welcome. I want to talk to you about the power and the potential of paradigms. Fifty years is a long time. You know, I could take you back to where it all started. It all started back in 1961. This book explains how I began to earn serious money starting in 1961. I want you to think with me for a moment. Think about results. One of the greatest teachers says, by their fruit you'll know them. In other words, the results always tell the truth. They tell what's going on inside. Now think of this for a moment. Why is there such a huge difference in the results that people experience in life? And believe me, the difference is really huge. You will find two people in the same family. One enjoy tremendous success, and the other a miserable failure. Why? Why does that happen? Well, after 50 years of study in this, I have come to the firm conclusion that it's what's going on inside. Do you know there was a great designer, architect, Buckminster Fuller, Bucky Fuller. He's the man that designed the geodesic dome. And he was aware that most of us are forever trying to change something in our life. And he gave us some phenomenal advice. He said, you never change things by fighting existing reality. To change something, you build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete. Well, you know, that's exactly what I did a little over 50 years ago. I had been forever struggling, struggling, I mean, trying to make ends meet. And it just wasn't working. You would think that after a few years of doing that, you would wake up and say, wait a minute, maybe my way's the wrong way. But I didn't. And you want to know something? A high percentage of the population are on the same track I was on. They just keep struggling, struggling. It's like a fly trying to work its way through a window pane. You know it's going to die there on the windowsill. Why do we keep doing that? We're God's highest form of creation. We have been endowed with potential, with mental faculties that they go beyond the scope of our imagination. Why don't we build a new model? Well, do you know there was a doctor in San Antonio, Texas in 1934. He was very involved in the healing arts, Dr. Thurman Fleet. And he was appalled at the state of the healing arts. He said, we're not treating the cause of disease at all. He said, we're treating the disease. We're treating the symptom. He said, if there's going to be any health, you've got to treat the whole person. You've got to get into the mind and the body of the individual. The body is the instrument of the mind. Now, no one's ever seen the mind. If you ask a person what's their mind look like, generally they think of the brain. But the brain isn't the mind any more than your fingernail is. Your brain, by the way, is an electronic switching station. As you activate brain cells, you set up vibration in parts of your body. Your brain is a phenomenal instrument. It's an electronic switching station. It's exactly what it is. But it's not the mind. Mind is movement. Body is the manifestation of that new movement. Now, this good doctor said, I'm going to create a picture of the mind. And there it is. There's the conscious mind, the subconscious and the body. Now, I have mentioned in a previous video, if you saw it, that Leland Val van der Waal explained this concept to me many, many years ago. I had been studying for a decade. I mean serious study. And I was winning, but I didn't know why. Do you know most people that are highly successful cannot articulate on why they are? I wasn't satisfied with the fact that I was successful. I wanted to know why I was. Because until I knew why, I couldn't share it with someone else. See, if you don't know why you're successful, you've got non-transferable skills. And the only person they're helping is you. You can't help anyone else. You can't even give them to your children. And Dal sat down with me. He said, the mind and the body. Then he talked about the conscious mind and the subconscious. And he said, Bob, you probably know a fair amount about that. And I said, I did. I had read many books on the mind. But I couldn't get the dots connected. And he said, that's because you don't have an image. Solomon said, where there is no image, where there is no vision, the people will perish. Yes, see, it's creator disintegrate. Well, I didn't have an image. He gave me the image. 
Now, he said, Bob, I'm going to teach you something about the mind. And what I'm going to share with you right now is the most valuable information you'll ever get. Your conscious mind is a part of your thinking mind. That's where your thinker is, your reasoning factor. That's what gives you the ability to think. And he said, that is the highest function that the human is capable of. Now, you and I are God's highest form of creation. There is nothing that will touch us if we utilize the potential, the God-given potential that we've got. This is very important. Thinking is the highest function we're capable of. And unfortunately, most people don't do very much of it. Your conscious mind is your intellectual mind. That's the educated mind. That's where the intellect is resident. This is where we gather all the knowledge in school. And if we remember it and repeat it, they'll tell us that we're educated, which isn't true, but that's another story. Now, he pointed out the subconscious mind is your emotional mind. And he said the conscious and the subconscious are totally different. If you're a psych major, the conscious mind reasons inductively and de deductively, where the subconscious just reasons deductively. I'm not going to get into that in any depth in this particular video. We will in a future one. But in other words, the subconscious can only accept, can't reject. Now, the conscious mind has the ability to choose. Do you know that all the little creatures in the world are totally at home in their environment? They blend in. You and I. We're the only creature on the planet, so far as we know, that's totally disoriented in our environment. And that is because we can create our own environment. Isn't that a beautiful concept? You and I have the ability to choose. J. Martin Coey, many years ago, wrote a little book. Just a little book, but it was powerful. And it was called Your Greatest Power, and that's your greatest power, the ability to choose. You have the ability to accept or reject. You can accept or reject anything I'm telling you. And you know, <coughs> unfortunately, most people don't utilize that properly. We reject what we should be accepting and we accept what we should be rejecting. We sit and listen to the news. We read the paper. We absorb all this negative information. They say, but it's real. That's the way it is. But it doesn't have to be real for you and it doesn't have to be that way for you. Why would we reject the idea that we could do great things? Why did the whole world reject the idea that the Wright brothers could actually introduce us to a new kingdom? Do you know there was only one man and four boys watched that historic flight? It took almost five years before the public believed that they actually got off the ground. Anytime anyone has made a great breakthrough, almost everybody rejected it, except to the person that made the breakthrough. You and I have the ability to accept or reject information. That is a phenomenal ability. We've got to learn how to use it properly. You and I have the ability to originate. We can actually originate ideas in our mind, create the world we want. Now, the subconscious mind must accept whatever you give to it. It's like the earth. It's immoral. It doesn't care what you plant, but it will return what you plant. Like Earl Nightingale explained the strangest secret. He said you can plant corn, a sweet food, or nightshade, a dead root poison. Right beside each other, one will grow with just as great an abundance as the other. The earth will accept it. The subconscious mind will accept it only the subconscious is many times more fertile than the earth. Your subconscious mind cannot reject. It has absolutely no ability to reject. Whatever you give to it, that's it. Now, here's the beautiful truth. Your subconscious mind cannot differentiate between what's real and what's imagined. Do you know, if you build an image in your mind, you see yourself doing something absolutely phenomenal, and you get emotionally involved, you'll end up doing it. That's the way it works. It's so phenomenal. If you ever get an opportunity to watch the video that uh, Sandra Gallagher, the, she's the president and CEO of our company, made on visioneering, lock into it, get it, and study it, because it's phenomenal, and she's really got it down pat. And that has to do with the imagination. Now, with all that information, what do we do with it? Well, let's take a look. How did we get to where we are. Is this us as an infant? Not quite. This part is missing. That's right. The conscious mind is missing. It has not developed. So let's set it out of the way and take a look at what happened to you and me when we arrived on the scene. Our subconscious mind, remember, it has to accept. It cannot reject. And whatever was going on around us goes right into our subconscious mind. Now, I was born during a Great Depression, during the Second World War. I was just a little kid. What kind of information do you think I was getting fed? Everybody, it was 
poverty. Everybody was screaming, just trying to make ends meet. That's all we heard. That's all that was programmed. Over and over and over, that information was programmed into the mind. Do you know that almost all welfare recipients are third, fourth, fifth generation welfare recipients? And that is because the baby sits there and accepts whatever's given to it. That's how you learn the language you learn. And you know something? You have an image of you. It controls how you walk. It controls how you talk. It controls how you meet 